Welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a lockdown Monday here in Melbourne. And of course, uh, let's continue our chat with the Southern United Football Club. And of course, let's turn our attention to the under-14s in particular. And lucky for them, they played probably three or four games before their season came to a close. Uh, and of course, uh, they have played since um, March. Of course, we've got two very special guests on the show from the 14s to tell us a bit about it. Thanks for, for joining us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having us. Thank you. I'll get both of you to uh, introduce yourselves and what position both of you played on the field prior to lockdown. Um, so I'm Eden Mc... I play midfield for the under-14s and I'm also captain of the under-14s. Yep, and I'm Taylor and I play goalkeeper for the under-14s. Tell us a bit about the start. Uh, I think, you, as I mentioned in the intro, you played three to four games before the lockdown happened. Um, how did you travel through the first month or so? Um, the first month or so, it was great, you know, having the new girls come in with new ways like to play. And um, we'll still get used to the new girls, but it's good to see how the old girls um, welcomed the new girls in so well. And it was just really good to have... Um, you know, the new girls have a different style of play to us and to really introduce that to the team as well. And especially with Braxy this year. So we had a new coach and that was really good too. Yeah, it was really good because like everyone like really joined together and like everyone like, um, like really welcomed the new girls, like the old girls, they welcomed everyone. So everyone just got along really well and yeah, it was really good. Uh I guess when the season stopped back in March, did you thought that you were going to get back on the field again? Um, yeah, we did. We thought, like, we were really hoping, like, once, because we came back to training, like, a couple months ago or a month ago, and everyone was, like, really excited to get back and start training. And then, again, this lockdown 2.0 happened, so everyone was, like, really sad. So, but we were really hoping to get back, but it's really unfortunate that we couldn't. Yeah, 100%. Um, there was definitely a lot of hope throughout the team that we were going to get back and play some games. We were really looking forward to playing at least a few more games because we hadn't obviously played against that many teams. So we would have just loved to play against more teams and see how they play and their different types of style of football. So it's just a shame. But we were definitely hopeful that we are going to get back. I guess with the... Uh... Pretty much the season is literally done uh, for 2020. Uh, do you still communicate with each other around the team to sort of, you know, keep yourselves um, together while, I guess, tech of the season sort of lasted? Oh, yeah. Um, we have a group chat, which is great because we're always talking in there and chatting and having a lot of banter, even though we're not on the field together, you know, we can still stay connected. And yeah, we're always talking together, which is great. And before stage four lockdown, we actually had a little meetup because we still could. So that was great as well. Had a little kick of the ball. Yeah, it was really good because Eden actually made a video of like all the girls together. So like we were all like kicking the ball and it was really good. So oh. yeah. yeah. Now, Eden, uh, you mentioned that you're the captain of the team. Uh, this year. Um, now, obviously, it's very unfortunate that uh, you only got the captain for four games, three to four games this year. Um, I guess for you, how special is the captain in the 14s team? Um, yeah, it means a lot. You know, I've been at Southern for five years now. So to get captain role this year was really good, but it's unfortunate that it didn't quite get that much time. But, you know, I don't need that much time to show that you know, I'm actually the captain. So it's not just on the field as well. It's off the field, you know, I'm still organising stuff for the girls to do at home. And yeah, so it's pretty good being the captain this year. Pretty special. Also was mentioned that uh, you did a video of uh, before lockdown 2.0. Um, obviously when the team got together before then. Um, I guess, how did that all come out? Yeah, it came out pretty well. You know, all the girls were super enthusiastic about the video. And as soon as I told them about it, they were like, oh yeah, how do I do it? What equipment do I need? And I just told them, just kick a ball around, you know, and I'll put it all together for you girls. And I'll post it all over social media. 
and yeah the coach loved it as well so yeah they were super like excited about it and it was great to see that all the girls are still sticking together and are still really like excited to get back next year and get into it again now helen you mentioned before that you're the goalkeeper of the team um i guess for you um considering you know uh, with no games uh, at all for the rest of the year. Um, have you been trying to sort of still train in some sort? And I guess my second part of that question is, how special is to have uh, Aiden as your captain? Um, yeah, I've been doing a bit. Like, I've been doing one on well with the 19s coach, Mel. Like, you're just doing goalkeeping basic stuff. And I've been trying to go for a few runs here and there and trying to eat healthy, but, you know... Um, but Eden as a captain, like, it's actually really good because she actually, like, she helps the girls. She knows what she's doing. She doesn't just speak, like, like the basics. Like, she actually talks, like, top stuff. So, it's really good. How special is that, Eden, to hear, hear that? Yeah, that's actually really nice hearing that um, I'm doing all the right things in that because sometimes, you know, you have a little bit of doubt that, oh, did I say that right or am I doing this right? And it's really nice to hear that Taylor's actually supporting what I'm saying and that on and off the field. And Ian, I'm going to have to ask the same question to you. How special is that Taylor in the team, especially um, in the most important position on the field in goalkeeping? Um, you know, I've played with Taylor for a couple of years now and it's good because she's got a really big personality that she brings to the team. You know, she's really enthusiastic about the game and yeah, playing the most important position in, um, on the pitch it's really good that she can handle like all that pressure on her and it's good. She handles it well. How special to hear, hear that from your captain. Yeah, it's really special. Thanks, Aiden. Uh, now you mentioned that you trained with um, that 19s coach, Mel, uh, and obviously she's a W League uh, goalkeeper herself. Uh, how special is it get that, that uh, I guess, personalised one-on-one -on -one training with her when you had the chance? Um, it's really good, like, because, like, most girls, like, are trying to train. And, like, me, I'm so lucky to have this one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one with Mel um, because I, I love it. Like, it's my favourite thing I do all week now because it's the only thing I do now. So it's really special. Now, for both of you, being part of the Sunder-14s team uh, in the, of course, the MPL, um, how special was the team going to be this year if the season, if we didn't have COVID, really? Um, it was going to be, I was really excited about this year. You know, um, I reckon this year was the year for the under-14 Southern. Again, all the new girls coming in really brought something like new to our team and especially having Braxy this year as well as our coach. She has a really nice style of coaching towards us and that. So, yeah, it was just really good. This year was going to be um, really special towards us and it's just a shame that we didn't get to play. Yeah, we were looking, like, really strong. Like, the last couple of games, I think we won. So, if we kept going forward, we would have gone. We would have been smashing it. So, our, it was really, yeah, good. Tell us a bit about Bratsy. Now, I know, I know her pretty well from uh, being an assistant coach and a premiership assistant coach uh, in MPO uh, under Deb. Uh, I guess, uh, tell us, how special have Braxy uh, coaching yourselves? Um, it's been really special. Like, like, she knows how to coach, so it's really good. Like, she's pretty tough on us. So, like, if we make a mistake, it's not like, oh, better not like next time. She actually tells us what to do and, like, helps us through it. So it's really, really special for her. Yeah, I've learned most of my stuff from Brax and Deb, but um, Brax especially, she understands like each player individually. And she obviously as a team um, gives us tasks in that. But what I like is she get, goes up to us individually and gives us individual tasks for that game. So she really understands each player individual as a person and a player. Now going into how did both of you get involved in the world game and how why did you choose it? Ooh. Um, 
Well, my brother started off actually playing at a small community club. And so I guess I was going to his training and games like every week. And I thought, you know what, I can actually kick his butt. So I thought I'd give a go at it. And yeah, so here I am continuing on with it. And yeah, I just love the game. So why stop? You know, I love it. I live and breathe soccer. It's just a no brainer to choose soccer. I mean, really for me. Um, yeah, I think I started it playing at primary school with a couple friends and that. And I kept like beating them and all that. And then I asked my dad, I was like, well, oh, I think I want to play soccer. So I went to Langwara and I played and I absolutely loved it. So I just kept going forward and kept playing. So it was really good. Now, I have to ask, um, now you obviously, Taylor, just mentioned what uh, your junior club was uh, in Lang Warren. Um, Aiden, did you have a junior club yourself before coming to I Southern? I did. I played for Rosebud Hart, actually, since I was probably four, possibly. So, yeah, that was a really good experience for me. You know, I was playing at such a young age. And then whenever I was about 10, I was actually playing for the under 15, 16 girls in their grand final and semi-final. So that was actually like, what an honor to be able to move up in community and play for the older girls as well. And they all brought me in and that, so. Now I have to ask, um, well, I've got a feel I know what um, the answer to this question based on what Eden just mentioned just a moment ago. Uh, what would be a highlight throughout both your football journey so far? Um, one highlight would definitely be making the NPL team, the WNPL team. That would definitely be a highlight. And probably just like playing the game. That's like one main highlight. Just being able to play is really good. Yeah, um, the highlight definitely for me has to be being in the starting lineup for the under 16 girls semi and grand final. Like that was such an honor to play in the starting lineup for Deb's team. Like she wanted me, she took me out of the 14s cause she wanted me to play for the 16s and all the 16s are super supportive of me coming up and playing in their grand final. And it was amazing. And we actually won the semi final, and that was the best experience. And it was just so good. Now, Eden, I spoke to one of your teammates from that 16s team uh, last year, just uh, early last week. Um, now, I want I want your opinion on this uh, on this one. Now, the semi-finals, if my memory serves me correct, went into penalty shootouts um, against South Melbourne, um, and of yes, course, they did. in that game before, unfortunately, falling short in the grand final. Uh, I guess uh, tell us a bit about that South Melbourne game. Um, I was freaking out a little bit at the start. Um, obviously playing up against bigger, older girls, probably stronger girls than me, but I knew that I could beat them on the more technical side. So before the game, a little bit stressful, but as soon as I got onto that field, it was really nice to be playing with the under 16s and Deb, the coach, just, you know, keep pushing us to our best. And that semi-final was probably the best game that I've played. I told Braxy on the bench, I don't think I can play anymore, actually. Like, I don't want to let the team down if I'm just going to get tired. And she said, give me 10 more minutes. And I ended up playing the whole, like, 120 minutes. So it was such a good game. And it's just unfortunate that we missed out in the granny. Uh, now, you all mentioned what position you both play on the field. If you had a preferred position where you love to convince Bratsy to put you, where would that be? Um, I don't know. I reckon either striker or defence, probably, yeah. One of those two. Um, I really love my position, to be honest. <laughs> but if I had to go somewhere else to convince Braxy, I would probably say... Oh, I don't know. Probably centre striker as well. You know, it's the closest thing to midfield. Maybe even centre defence somewhere along the lines in the middle of the field, I reckon. Now, I know for a fact that goalkeepers can actually get, uh, can score goals, uh, especially when it comes to penalty shootouts. Taylan, have you ever scored a goal as a goalkeeper? Um, not that I know of, but... Before I was a goalkeeper playing at Lang Warren, I did score a couple of goals 
But I don't think as a goalkeeper, no. I've been close, but not, no. Uh, now, Eden, have you scored any goals yourself? And is there any notable ones we should know about? Ooh, I have scored multiple goals, but ooh, I don't know. Probably most of them are actually from outside the 18. Being a central defence midfielder, I kind of got to cover the attacking midfielders to hang back a little bit. So there's probably one goal that I can remember against Heidelberg. I was pretty much one-on-one -on -one with a keeper outside the 18 and I've chipped it over her and it's gone straight into the net. So that was probably the most memorable one for me. Now, Talon, you got a pretty good position where you are as a goalkeeper because you get to see the whole field um, from where you're positioned. I guess, um, how important I guess, do you give any advice to your, you know, your back three or even to Eden, who's the captain? Um, yeah, I try to. I don't know if it comes across as, like, properly or not, but I try to. Like, when I'm standing there, I try to yell out, like, a couple advice for the girls. So I try to, but I don't know if it works. Now, what does the sport of the world game mean to both of you, especially playing there at Southern? Oh, um, soccer means everything to me. You know, I live and breathe soccer. Played since basically I could walk. And it's just during these rough times, I've really noticed how much I'm missing it. But that's only going to um, grow my passion for the game. You know, so when we come back, I'm definitely going to come roaring and ready to go. And as for Southern... I've been there for five years and it's it's like a little family there. Every time, every year we get new players, um, we're also supportive of them. And it's not just the players, it's the parents and the grandparents that come to the games and we all bring each other together. So we're like a big family and it's so great to see how supportive everybody is at Southern. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I, I like everything, you know? I like I love going to training, I love game day, I love like the thought of soccer. I just I love it. It's great. Now, do either of you have any long or short term goals in the sport of the world game? Yeah, definitely like to make the Matildas, definitely. Like be able to go to the high league players with, with like a bunch of highly girls athletes so yeah that's a definitely a main goal for me yeah for sure me as well I would love to play um in the Olympics and World Cup one day for the Matildas but I would also love to be traveling the world and experience all the different cultures and traditions that all the countries in the world have to offer now I know Obviously, as both you would already know by now, um, that uh, obviously was the Women's World Cup is here in Australia, New Zealand in 2023. Um, is there any particular players or teams that you would love to see at the World Cup here, once it's here in Melbourne? Um, not really any particular players. You know, each one of them brings a different addition to the Matildas, but it's so great that we can host the World Cup because it's going to change women's football I reckon for Australia and New Zealand to be hosting it and I actually turned to mum and I said we're going and she goes okay so <laughs> it's it's just going to be a great experience for everybody in Australia and New Zealand to enjoy. Yeah same yeah what Eden said yeah it's just it's going to be great you know to watch you know the sport we love the players we love the teams we love on in your own country and that it's going to be really good so i guess what did i guess uh Aiden and and also yourself taylor mentioned uh, just a little bit before which i'm going to get both of you to um i guess stretch it out a little bit which is um what did that announcement mean to both of you and have both of you convinced any of your friends at school to jump on board um in this world game um, it means a lot, yeah. Um, and I have convinced a couple friends to go and play, but I don't know if they really enjoy the sport. But I've tried to convince them, so I don't know. Um, yeah, again, hosting the World Cup 
2023 for Australia and New Zealand, it's going to change the game. It's going to change how everybody thinks about women's football and it's just going to change everything. Everybody's going to be there to experience the great game. And, yeah, it's just going to be fantastic. I've also convinced a couple of friends to come with me <laughs> to join the game. They were like, I really don't want to, but I made them. So they're coming. Now, what will be your advice to uh, girls out there, especially that should get involved in the World Game, considering, obviously, as we mentioned, uh, the World Cup's only three years away? Um, yeah, definitely get involved. So if you don't like it, you can just move on to another sport. But if you don't get involved, then you might regret later on that you didn't get involved because, you know, it's the most popular sport in the world for a reason. Everybody loves it. You know, wherever you go, people are talking about, oh, did you watch that game last night? Did you listen to that? Um, podcast last night on soccer so it's everywhere like why not join a team and just have a go at it yeah you know just like do what you love you know stay committed stay focused go for big goals dream big and just do what you love you know let's finish up with a couple of light-hearted questions about your teammates uh firstly who had the most embarrassing moment so far this year probably Either Rhiannon, because she's our striker, so she might have a couple goals. I reckon everybody's had a bit of an embarrassing moment, to be honest. Whenever you have a game, you're not really thinking about, oh, what's my photos going to look like after the game? But then you look <laughs> at the after-game photos, and um, you're in the middle of a header making a stupid face, and you're like, that's not a very good photo of me. And everybody's had one of those photos before. Uh the comedian in the team? Ooh. Um, I think everybody brings a different aspect of, you know, their own humour to the team and we all gel together and we just, you know, we blend quite together. Like, we're all in individual groups, but when we need to come together, we come together and we have a good laugh together. So that's great. Aiden said, like, everyone, like, joins together, laughs together, just has a lot of fun together. So, yeah. Best singer and dancer in the team. Now, I know there's this thing called TikTok, so uh, I'm assuming uh, your teammates have been involved in that. So uh, um, who's the best singer and dancer in the team? Oh, I mean, it's got to be Kayla. <laughs> um, yeah, Kayla brings a speaker every week to the games and she always likes to get up in the middle of the change rooms, have a little dance and sing, and everybody's kind of just staring at her like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's gonna be Kayla. Yeah, definitely Kayla. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Evie, you mentioned before that uh, you organised some challenges um, during this isolation COVID thing. Um, now, what's the strangest thing that you've set the team, and what's the funniest one you've done? Ooh, what's the strangest thing I've sent the team? Ooh, probably that last one is probably a bit strange you know they're all kind of a bit confused on what to do they were like what is this you know why would you send us this <laughs> but um yeah definitely send them a lot of challenges like to keep the girls on their toes you know they never know when they're going to get a new challenge probably is it the funniest one i don't know there's so many i just can't remember there's just all over instagram and you could honestly just spend hours looking for new challenges and what's your favorite challenge that Eden's uh, sent out Probably the last one, the video, because I actually got to go out, you know, do some keeping. So, yeah, definitely the last one. That was probably the funnest one. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, I have to mention, now, Ed, and you mentioned before that you had siblings uh, that uh, um, been involved in sport. Now, I'm going to ask both of you the same question, which is, if you have brothers and sisters that play the sport uh, or used to play the sport, Who's the better football player? Oh, definitely me. Because my brothers, like, they hate soccer. There are all other sports, football, basketball, cricket, all that. So they hate soccer. So, yeah, definitely me. Ooh, I'm going to have to say me as well, you know. Like, 
he doesn't can he doesn't actually play anymore. But when occasionally when we have that like one on one, I usually kick it. That's really good. <laughs> um, especially when he's like six foot three and I'm like five foot four and I'm like this tiny ass midget to him. It's really good to kick his ass, you know. I oh, love it. Um, now, of course, I've got to finish off with this one last one, which is: Do any of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? Oh, I have so many, so many. So I have training and game day boots that I actually have to wear for training and game day. Everybody knows I even have shoe covers to protect my boots. <laughs> um, I have a certain headband that I have to wear on that day. So I usually wear uh, white for training, black for game day. But if something tells me, if my gut tells me to wear a different one, I'll wear a different one. <laughs> and I have a certain hairstyle that I have to wear on game days. <laughs> Training doesn't matter. Game days, I have to have a hairstyle that only mum can do for me. <laughs> so there's a lot, you know. Morning yeah. routines take, you know, quite a bit of time. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say I have, like, any really. Just... You got. I gotta wake up in a positive, positive move, mood, or otherwise my game's terrible. So, you know, I just gotta be positive. So that's it, really. Now, Eddie, you mentioned about uh, one of those uh, superstition, superstitional ritual, which was the headband. Um, have you ever tried a different colour headband, and has that worked? Oh, actually. So I've just recently gotten new Nike headbands and Ooh. they are really good. But before I had pink headbands for game day because Southern obviously. Yeah. But um, occasionally I'd have a headband that goes missing and I do have to wear a different one. And I don't think it changes anything, but I still have to go with a headband <laughs> even though it doesn't change anything. I still prefer to wear the headband that I want on that morning. <laughs> Well, Bofi, thank you so much for joining us. It's awesome having Bofi on the show. Also, I would love to be talking to you uh, about the, the season uh, if it wasn't for this COVID uh, that's uh, hit us all. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see Bofi back on the field and hopefully I'll we'll get to uh, see your team in action uh, next year in 2021. And uh, and hopefully we get to see Southern at its very best uh, again uh, next year. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. No worries. And that's Taylor and Eden there from the Southern United uh, Under-14s uh, MPL women's uh, team. Of course, uh, next year, make sure to get out and support these amazing uh, football players. Of course, down at Carrum Downs in particular, where their new venue is. And of course, uh, and make sure you support the Mighty Southern uh, team in 2021. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away. Here on Lockdown Monday. <laughs>